your vision for real with Alicia Michelle. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another Eurovision for Real podcast episode. I am your host, Alicia Michelle, and today is going to be exciting because we're going to be breaking down some wild predictions for who will actually qualify from the second semifinal. If you have not decided to like follow this podcast, what are you waiting for? Just hit the follow button. You'll get notified every time there's a new episode and you can hop in here. And to be fair... All the episodes here are not just videos like that I do on my YouTube channel. I try to do, you know, some tailored content, you know, for the Eurovision for Real podcast. So firstly, thank you for listening if you're listening. And then I think we should just get into this conversation now. If you listen to my previous podcast, I was talking about, uh, you know, semifinal one. Now, people are calling semifinal one the semifinal of death. And I'm not going to lie, I am living in that world. I know there are some people who are like, what if both of our semifinals are like really competitive? Here's the thing. We could have two really competitive semifinals. But the thing is, to me, what makes like a semifinal of death is where I know I'm going to lose more than one really, really good song. And the tricky thing with like kind of saying that is, We don't know all the songs. And if we look at the second semifinal, like as of me recording this, we don't have Austria's song. We just got Switzerland's song. I don't have Greece's song yet. Albania's doing a revamp and I don't have that yet. (laughs) Armenia is like super quiet, I feel like. I don't don't know what Armenia's doing. Like Armenia is so quiet that I'm like, are y'all participating this year? (laughs) Are you gonna grace us (laughs) this year? You know, so... So just in the first half, we've got like five songs that we, you know, we don't even have. We and, and, you know, we have maybe ideas about them, but, you know, we might not even get a live performance to kind of stack up next to it to really get a good sense of like what we're going to be served on the Eurovision stage. So that's like just the first half. And then if we're talking about the second half, you know what? Like Georgia, we haven't heard the song yet. We've had ideas. We have ideas of what it could be. The Netherlands, as of me beginning this recording, I'm I'm hoping that midway through this recording, I will be able to hop in and listen to what the Netherlands is giving us. But I do think that joust, boast, joust, joust. Okay, joust. I, I'm trying to work on getting this name right. I I really hope in the song he like opens it up and is like. I'm blah, blah, blah. And this is my song. Like, I really hope that we have that because then, you know, I know that I will fully, fully be, you know, getting the name correct. But I think the Netherlands is going to be good this year. So I'm and because I've looked at the back catalog and I'm like, look, if the song is anything like the back catalog, I'm going to like it. But we'll see, because sometimes with the Netherlands, their internally selected artists do sometimes deviate a little bit from what they normally kind of put out there. I, I have noticed that with the Netherlands. So maybe midway through this recording, I will get the Netherlands song and then we can figure that out. We got Norway song. We got Latvia song. We do have San Marino song and we have Belgium. Okay, so let me let's lay this out here. And, you know, of course, the disclaimer is we're doing this for fun. OK, so if you're like, how oh, this is ridiculous. How can you be predicting who will qualify? You don't even have all the songs. Guess what? You're no fun. So get out of here. This is for fun people only. (laughs) This is for people who want to have fun only. If you can't have fun, get out of the kitchen. Get out of the podcast. Because we're just going to be wild here and make some crazy predictions. But, you know, maybe by the end of this conversation, I will be thinking to myself, oh, man. Maybe, maybe we are going to have two semifinals of death. Maybe, maybe. I'm not convinced yet. I'm not convinced yet. But, you know, and we also have to keep in mind, there are also the songs that the studio cut is great. It's dynamic. But then when you see it live, there's something about that instant magic that just doesn't quite translate to the live performance. A perfect example of this. I'm going to be real with y'all. And some of y'all are going to have your feelings hurt. So prepare yourselves. Okay. I kind of feel like that's what happened with Austria last year. I think the music video was so dynamic. It was so fun. It had so much personality and energy. And I just feel like with the staging package that we got, it sort of, I don't want to say weakened, 
But it took a little bit of the wind. It took a little bit of the humor of the snark out of the fun of the song. Like, I just felt like, you know, Taya and Selena, I didn't get to see them as dynamic as we kind of saw them in the music video. And that's not really their fault. I truly think it was the choice of the type of staging package that they went with. Because I think instead of leaning into sort of the funny kitsch moments, which I think that that song could have gotten away with doing because there was actually like meaning and like, uh, real validity to the meaning of the song I was like then in the visuals you can have fun you can kind of poke fun at things because it's not like the song is just you know a joke like it's not like everyone gets that so let's have some fun on the stage and I think there's always something to be said for making sure you're showcasing the personality of your performers and I just think in that staging package last year we didn't quite get that like we just didn't quite get that so okay so let's get into this if you listen to the last one you have a little bit of background but I'm going to assume that folks didn't listen to the last one so here's the criteria that I'm using and this is a fact I didn't make this up it is backed up by stats and facts we will get more songs qualifying most likely in an all televote semi from the second half than we will the first half okay so if we've got uh, 10 slots that are available, we can be rest assured that it'll be more like a four, six split, four from the first half, six from the second half. Like that is like a safe way of like breaking this down. I know some people don't like that. And it sucks that like running order affects things and it sucks that like, you know, the draw isn't always on your side. It does suck. I, I I think that it sucks. So let's just go down the list. Let's see. Let's see how quickly I can do this. I'm going to tell y'all, Austria, I, I, we have not heard the song in full. I haven't seen a live performance. But guess what? We have seen that girl perform on stage. We have seen her sing and dance. And she's got attitude. She's got sass. I think Austria has the opportunity to possibly open the show with We Will Rave. Da, 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 da. I know now I, I would be silly. We know that Austria has also sometimes on the Eurovision stage let us down with the live performance, even though the song had like all the hype. Perfect example. Now we can be CEOs. Da, 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 da. But the difference between that situation and what we have this year is we do have a seasoned performer. Maybe not a seasoned vocalist performer, but a seasoned performer who has been in the industry. And for some reason, I trust her. So I'm going to go ahead and say, I think Austria is going to make it. Okay. Next up, in, and I'm looking at uh, the Eurovision like official graphics of the splits of the allocation draw. I'm going to put Malta on the shelf for now. I'm putting Malta on the shelf because although I think Europe wants to have fun and they want to have a party, I do wonder if if poor Sarah Bonici could be compared to uh, Colleen. Is her name Colleen from, from Austria? If she is compared to Colleen, people might want to buy that package over Sarah Bonici. We don't know. At least Sarah Bonici has given us a live performance. So I'm not saying that it'll really be her fault. And we know that Malta has traditionally struggled with the televote. So I'm putting Malta on the shelf. We'll come back to it if we have some slots, if we have some slots open. Okay. So I'm I'm starting this off with a four six split. I don't know if this is how it'll go, but I'm gonna try to do this with a four six split. Switzerland just came out. I'm telling y'all, I love it. The song is, I think, dividing a lot of people. But I think divisiveness sometimes works at the Eurovision Song Contest. So I'm going to go ahead and say that Switzerland is going to make it. The other thing that makes me think Switzerland is going to make it is Switzerland has made it with less. <laughs> Switzerland has qualified with far less. Now, I do think that this song... Again, divisive. I, I just, the only thing that makes me maybe nervous is this is a vocally challenging song. And Nemo is a young performer. And y'all know I get nervous for my young performers. 
I do. But Remo last year was a young performer and the vocals were on point. So I'm going to go with a little bit of hopefulness. I'm going to go with a little bit of hopefulness. And I am going to say Switzerland is going to make it because also too Switzerland does stage well. So we know the staging is going to be on point. So I'm feeling good about Switzerland making it. Greece, we don't have the song, y'all. And I know some of y'all are going to be like, Alicia, how can you say this? Y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that Greece is making it, okay? Marina Sati is a seasoned performer. I know that Marina, the word on the street is that she was basically, she was just being given song after song after song, and she was being picky. And I love that. She wasn't just taking the first thing that came her way. She was like, I think there was a little bit of, I need to stay true to myself. What we're hearing about the song is it's going to have some English elements, but I think it's also going to have Greek elements. So it's going to be a little bit of an ethno fusion sort of experience. Marina Sati is well known. She is someone that a lot of us who love Greece. Yes, I love Greece at the Eurovision Song Contest who love Greece have been kind of hoping that she would represent Greece. So I'm going to say Greece is in there. I'm, I'm going to give it to Greece that I think they're going to make it through. And and here's the thing. Marina Sati, I just want to be clear, although a young female performer, she's not a dipping and doing it young female performer, a la Colleen and Sarah Bonici, you know? So I think she gets to occupy I, I think she will be able to occupy a lane the only person who could be coming for her would be Bessa from Albania and I will say I actually think studio cut wise this song feels modern for Albania it feels traditional but there's a little bit of attitude there's spunk to it so in that fourth slot I'm gonna tell you what I'm in between I am in between because Armenia also too I don't know They've been radio silent, so I really think that this fourth fourth slot could be Armenia. If they're coming correct like they did last year, I'm feeling confident about Armenia. I'm going to be real with you. I'm feeling real confident about Armenia if they give us something a la what they did last year. But I have no clue. I have no clue. So I'm going to be irrational here, or, or actually I'm going to be rational here and just say, I just don't have enough information about Armenia right now to even consider putting them in the slot. And so the people who will benefit from this are going to be Albania and Denmark. Because here's the thing, Czechia, as much as I think the studio cut of Pedestal is good, that live performance at the national selection really shook me to my core. It shook me to my core so deeply because I was so shocked at how poorly executed that vocal was. I have to be real. Now, do I have hope that Ico can get in the vocal gym and get it together and figure out how to pace this song better? I can be hopeful. And we should all be hopeful for her because this is her introduction to the world. So I want to see it, but I'm just going to go ahead and say that it might not come together in the way that we want. Not to mention the fact that, yes, Czechia has struggled before, uh, historically at Eurovision, I know that they've been on a better train, you know, recent years, obviously, but I am still, I, I do still think, you know, Czechia is still building a little bit of their Eurovision sort of knowledge, even amongst like folks in the Czech Republic, where at, like every time I've talked to like Czech artists, they're like, yeah, a lot of people don't even really know about Eurovision. So I think we won't fumble the bag too much. It won't be that bad, but this will be a learning. Um, this will be a learning year, I think, for Czechia potentially. Because the other thing with Czechia's song is, remember, we've talked about this before. Sort of, they call it like the strong woman curse, and I kind of hate the phrase of that. But unfortunately, I do think it tends to be accurate. Perfect example of this was, I'm speeding you up, no longer a part. We don't beat from the same heart. Another, I would say, recent example of this is ha 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 Ranella. Ranella, I think, is a recent experience of this. It's something about the genre where women have these songs that get seen as aggressive. And for some reason, with televoters, I think, really have been affected by it more than juries. And now, you know, we're living in a world with no juries in the semis. I think that Aiko's song does kind of fall in line or could be interpreted that way. 
And so I'm going to say that Checky is going to sit this one out. I love the studio cut, but I feel like I have to be realistic. So again, fighting for this fourth slot, I really think it's going to be Albania v. Denmark. And, and the crazy thing is, Denmark might actually have the edge. There's something about the song that I think is sticking with people, although it is a little bit like, to me, this is Denmark's song is kind of like a perfect example of like a songwriting camp song. It's radio friendly. It's inoffensive. It's a song that does feel formulaic it has the vocal moments it has a very clear you know song structure that everyone can follow verse pre-chorus chorus it has like sort of that uh scandy production ooh, ooh, you know that sort of uh like thing that feels like a melody that everyone can kind of latch on and it just sort of sticks with you and so i think that that's a little bit of an advantage uh but here's the thing Albania could edge them out. Why do I think Albania could edge them out? I think that Albania is oftentimes uh, underrated at Eurovision and particularly in the fan bubble. But the thing is, Albania has found a way to be, I would say, um, really good at being Albanian. Here's the challenge, though. I just want to say because I I was like, I don't want to leave Armenia out of this. But I could see Albania and Denmark staying on the shelf if Armenia comes with something like they had last year. And and by that, I mean correct. <laughs> Current track, a little bit ambitious in the studio cut, and the staging was immaculate. So if Armenia is going to give us quality this year, which we know that they are capable of doing, then I'm not worried. But if Armenia is kind of fumble in the bag I you know I'm like I don't know and if and if they have a male performer that is a la like kind of what Musti's giving or you know even a little bit like bombastic and fun like with what the Netherlands could be giving then Armenia could sit out as well and then Albania being this country that a lot of people don't always check for but people at home tend to go, ooh, yeah, Albania's doing Eurovision. Because I think that's like kind of the adjective that people at home see when they see Albania. But we know that they're translating the song to English. And that is one of the big reasons why I'm like, Al- Al- Albania, I'm not feeling as confident. I'm not feeling as confident. And I really do think as inoffensive and kind of safe and arguably, if people want to say bland, you can say bland about Denmark. But there are is a subset of people who like just this. They like this stuff. So for the purposes of this, I'm actually, I'm going to give the edge to Denmark with the caveat of, you know, I will easily remove Denmark if Armenia were to come correct, but I don't have a lot of information on them. All right, let's move to the second half. Okay, let's move to the second half. And... um. I'm going to say, so with the second half, I'm, I'm going to say Estonia is qualifying. This is the type of joyfulness at Eurovision that I like. I don't really like entries that are like trying to be funny because the, the problem is if I then am not laughing, then you have failed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and honestly, like I'll be candid with y'all. That's kind of how I feel about Finland. Like, Finland's entry is supposed to be funny. Like they are trying to be funny. They are trying to sort of do like a Will Ferrell-esque thing. And, you know, I don't even know if I said this in my other podcast. It's so crazy because I remember when the Eurovision movie was like rumored to come out and everyone was like, oh, like they're going to make it seem like a joke and blah, blah, blah. They actually really did it. Like, you know, obviously, like if you've seen the Eurovision movie, like, the Icelandic song was great. (laughs) But I feel like what Finland is doing is almost like you could slot that into the movie as like this was the finished performance and like people would be like, oh, ha ha, you know, like, oh, okay, it's Eurovision, it's camp, it's crazy. And the thing to me is I could get with it if it actually made me laugh. 
it really doesn't like I don't think it's bad per se, but it just I don't find it funny. So it's like if the pursuit is for this to be funny and bring me joy, they are failing in that endeavor for me personally. Estonia, I don't know if they're trying to be funny. Like, I think it is kitsch. I think they want the song to be joyful. But to me, it brings me joy. Like, I'm not laughing at it. I'm like, I feel like I'm laughing with it. And I feel that they are inviting us in to have a good time. So Estonia, I'm putting you in. I mean, it's qualifying. Georgia, I'm going to put Georgia on the shelf. The thing with Georgia that worries me really is Georgia has direct competition, I think, with Greece and Albania for sure, like for sure does. I want to see Georgia qualify. And so I've been hopeful that Georgia is going to give us something that I'm like, ooh, this is strong. I'm just worried. I'm just worried for it because honestly, I felt like Georgia had, you know, a qualification worthy song last year so I don't know I'm just I'm just I'm taking a deep breath I'm trying to be hopeful and I am open I'm open for Georgia winning me over but right now for the purposes of this wild and crazy we don't even have all the songs (laughs) um prediction I'm gonna say that Georgia is out next up the Netherlands the Netherlands is in They sat out last year. They learned their lesson. They're coming back for a vengeance. The Netherlands is in. I actually think that the Netherlands has the opportunity to possibly best some of the other fun, out-of-the-box, wacky entries that we have this year. I think just based off of what Yoast has done in the past, yeah, what based off of what Yoast has done in the past, if it's a la that, you know, and I really think it could be the Netherlands and Croatia battling it out for that televote winner. And honestly, Croatia might actually have the edge, y'all. They might, they might, they might, but we'll see. I think the Netherlands is really going to deliver, so I am optimistic. Norway, I'm putting you in. Norway is qualifying. You're in. Latvia, I'm nervous about Latvia, and it's crazy because I think a lot of people are just feeling like Don's hollow is a lock. I think they're just thinking it's a lock. And I'm kind of like, although I think it's palpable, I I do think there's something like you don't forget it, you know, like the song. And, and I think there's something arresting about it. You know, don't look up, you know, I, I just, whoa, you'll see me cry in rivers. And we do have a little bit of a vacuum um, with the ballads. And particularly, I think, with the ballads in this semifinal. So for this purpose, I'm putting Latvia in. But I do think if Latvia doesn't make it, I think it'll have something to do with the way, like the live performance, not from the vocal, but really the creative direction of the live performance will be the thing that I think could put this in a place that's like, ooh, okay. So, hmm. So let me be clear. I am putting Latvia in, okay? I'm saying Latvia is in. But between you and me, you know, on the Eurovision for real podcast, I wouldn't say that Latvia is a lock, even if we look at kind of the numbers of things, uh, like how things went down last year. But I'm saying Latvia makes it. Next up, San Marino. I think San Marino is making it, y'all. I, I think San Marino is making it. They've got Spain voting in their semi. I think, you know, they're giving us sort of this bombastic rock that I do think when there isn't a whole lot of it at the Eurovision Song Contest, people are like, oh, thank God, like something rock. Like there's a demographic of people who watch Eurovision and they're like, thank God, not another pop song. And they will pick up the phone and vote for it because of that. San Marino, we know they invest in the staging. Megara has vision. I just, I think that this is going to be executed well. And I'm going to say that San Marino does make it. I'm going to say that. And then closing out the semi, Belgium. I I mean, we don't know if Belgium is closing out the semi. uh, But at the bottom of the graphic is Belgium. Belgium is definitely qualifying, y'all. Definitely qualifying. There's no question. it. They're qualifying. So if I did a 6-4 split... If I look at this, so what I'm saying for this 
crazy prediction. We're doing it. We're doing it. We're, we're doing it. We don't have all the songs, but we're having fun and we're making predictions. Austria, I'm going to say that Colleen with We Will Rave will be executed well. She will be our pop girly dipping and doing it on the stage. And I think she will be the pop girly that edges out and is able to advance. So Austria, you're in there. I'm going to say Malta. I'm going to say Malta, Sarah Bonici, you're probably sat sat there on the freezer. It's not really your fault. You just, I mean, who knew that you were going to have the girl who did the rehearsal for Fuego <laughs> in, your, in, in your half? like in your half in its first half it's Malta so I'm I'm gonna say like maybe Malta sits out maybe I, I I'm gonna be real with y'all I could see a path for Malta qualifying I'll just be honest but let's say Malta gets shafted with the running order again Malta has struggled before with televote so let's just say Malta is out next up Switzerland the song is seeming to be divisive, but I think it's going to be executed so well that even for the people who are kind of like, what did I just see? They'll be like, what did I just see? This is crazy, but I'm sold. <laughs> like, this was wild. I've never seen anything or heard anything like this. I'm picking up the phone and I'm calling. So Switzerland, you're in. Next up, Greece, you're in. Marina Sati is going to bring Greece back to the grand final and might even be able to edge out a top 10 finish. I'm hopeful for Marina. I like I will say that that is my bias. I am hopeful that just what we're going to get is going to be good. I'm hopeful the song is going to be good and I'm hopeful the staging is going to be good. Now, does Greece have a perfect record when it comes to staging? They absolutely do not. OK. Marina is great, but she's not a miracle worker. But I do feel like just her as an artist will be enough so that even if the staging is a little bit of a miss, we will still like the song will just be so good that we got to have it. Uh, Czechia, I'm saying you're out. I'm saying that I think you will wow us on the stage and everyone will be like, oh my gosh, like, wow, Iko really has improved. But I think it just won't be enough to make it through. So Czechia, you're staying on ice. And then I got to... Albania, Denmark, and Armenia. I think that it's Albania versus Denmark. I think if Albania didn't translate the song to English, then I'd be given Albania the edge. But since they are saying that they're translating it to English, I'm saying Denmark makes it. But guess what? Albania and Denmark could both lose out if Armenia gives us anything like Brunette last year. So I have to do a little bit of an asterisk with that one. I think Denmark and Albania could stay seated, you know, if Armenia really, really wows us, which we know Armenia has the ability to do, but they also have the ability to fly maybe too much under the radar sometimes. But I will also say even last year with Brunette, I thought that that song should have finished way higher than it did at the end. You know, I thought that that was one of the best songs that we had last year. It was in my top 10. So we'll just see. So I, I'm right now, I'm kind of saying it's Denmark. I'm saying that Denmark gets the edge if we're looking Albania v. Denmark. But I do think Armenia could stomp on both of them. Next up, Estonia. Estonia is making it. I'm going to say that people at home will be like, it's fun. It's party. Yes, I think I think that commentators are going to give people um, a little bit of like the song is about and then folks are going to be like, whoa, this is crazy. And it's about this. I think people will latch onto it. So Estonia, you're in Georgia. Unfortunately, I'm going to say you're out. I wish I would have heard the song. I wish I would have been listening to it like right now because I think if I was listening to it I'd be able to maybe feel a little bit more like "Ooh, this is tricky like what's the battle between you know kind of Austria Malta Georgia Albania gonna be looking like you know what I mean like I I think I would feel a little bit more nervous but uh, as of now I'm just gonna say maybe y'all miss out because also too I just feel like you know last year I really could have seen Georgia make it like and it didn't happen so I'm almost kind of nervous like well damn maybe even if Georgia does give us something of quality maybe they miss out again which sucks but you know this is the Eurovision Song Contest crazy things happen the Netherlands you're in there you're in there no question Norway do I need to say anything more 
you're in there, Gota. I like I so appreciate Norway for giving us this entry. It is so good. It is, I, I think, gonna be one of my hand like this is definitely a lock for my top ten this year at Eurovision, and we don't even have all the songs. That's how good the song is to me. So it's in. Lafia, I'm nervous for it, y'all. I I, I want to be clear. I'm nervous for it, but Lafia, I'm saying you make it through. I think because this is, you know, really a straightforward ballad. You know, I should say a straightforward power ballad. And we really don't have a lot of that, particularly in the semi. I think it'll end up feeling refreshing. So we're going to get Lafia. San Marino, you're the rock person. You're giving us the medal. Like, you're holding it down. So San Marino, you're in there. And then Belgium, I mean... I think that this is, I, I'm worried about the staging for it, but I'm not worried about Musti. And I think sonically the track is strong. It's qualifying for sure. Oh my goodness, y'all. So I have to do, I guess, a resolution. So I did it. I did it. This is completely crazy. We don't have all the songs, but I made a prediction. How do you feel about it? Who do you feel is missing? You think you want to make a case? For a country that I didn't mention that that's going to make it through, feel free. Feel free to tell me. But I will tell you, looking at this list of what's left with love, I think I'm still living in my world that the first semifinal is the semifinal of death. And I think for this second semifinal, I think the songs that we let go, I think we're not going to feel that bad that they were let go. I think that we will be able to come to terms with the fact that those songs maybe needed to be left on the table so that we can have, you know, the strongest Eurovision grand final that we can have. Well, that concludes this episode of the Eurovision for Real podcast. We broke down semifinal two. Crazy. I can't believe that we did that. If you love this podcast, please do everything you can to subscribe and follow. You don't want to miss any of the episodes we have coming up. And I know some of y'all aren't really on YouTube like that. And they're like, okay, well, can you do more stuff here? I will make sure that my interviews pop up here. And I mean, we're really in Eurovision season right now. We really, really are in the thick of it. And I just want to say thank you for listening. And please do follow this podcast and subscribe. I got more in store for you.